Yeah, Murray, an interesting sort of situation for Blind Al in that, like, Munster couldn't be accused of, of moving on from him necessarily because they have shown him great loyalty and just the efforts they've put in medically and whatnot in getting him back onto the pitch. But, you know, in his absence, they've also signed, to borrow the American term, a kind of a, a franchise 10 um, in Joey Carberry, who's going to be very difficult to displace, uh, particularly in big European games. Like, what does the future hold for Blind Al at Munster? Is it just he, he obviously has to try and wrestle that position back from Carberry? But, you know, do you see him lasting there for a couple of years, even if he can remain fit? Or for a player of his calibre, you know, could could he potentially lo- look to move abroad again and, and maybe get a starting berth somewhere? Yeah, I think it's going to be interesting to see if he comes back at 10 or, or possibly at, a, at inside centre. He came on there for the Munster A team against Leinster. I was there a couple of weekends ago watching that fixture, his comeback. And, and, and as Andy said there, he, he certainly was hesitant around contact, understandably so. He was actually standing out on the wing in, in defence and kind of staying on the edge. Uh, so that will take a bit of time to get back. But he, it was interesting to see him come on in, in the kind of 12 role. And he certainly mm-hmm. has the attributes, I guess, when he's fully fit to do that. Like, if you think about Blaindal, he's almost part of the furniture there now, but he's only had essentially one campaign, uh, and it was a really impressive one. 2016-17, a lot of people will kind of understandably focus on that Saracen semi-final when Munster really were totally outclassed across the pitch, I thought. Obviously, it wasn't Blaindal's best game, but if you think about that entire season before that, he had some really superb performances. Like, they beat Glasgow, they beat Leicester, they beat Racing, hammered to lose in the quarterfinal, and he was excellent all that way, obviously guiding them into a Pro 14 final as well. I know from being in New Zealand, he's really highly regarded as a kind of rugby brain down there and that's a kind of important role he plays with Munster he's kind of a tactical thinker and strategist and he helps a lot in that department he's in the leadership group Um, and as you say they've stuck by him like Anthony Foley couldn't have been more praising of this guy he said he's a a, a brilliant person as well as as player so I think there's a lot more to see from it's easy to forget that he was in Ireland camp as recently as August 2017 as well and Joe Schmidt Mm -hmm. is obviously no fool when it comes to a player so I wouldn't just I wouldn't be discounting him just yet. I think it's a massive boost for him to have him back available. And I think it'll be interesting to see potentially if he's viewed as a 12, a kind of playmaking inside centre moving forward. I think Monster are going to try damn hard to hold on to him for for just for strength and depth. I, I do I do think Joey is their, their marquee man. And I, I think he's going to stay there and deservedly so. But when you look at um, the, the, the overall course of a season and what for example, is happening exactly in the next three weeks. If Blaindale doesn't happen to be promoted to an Irish squad, he's of massive value to the Munster group. I think the, um, I suppose looking at that that second distributor option as a 12 um, it is a trend in the game that has developed over the last three to four years that a lot of teams have opted for. Probably m- most notably, I can think, is the, the George Ford and uh, Far- Farrell. Owen Farrell axis and it really gives a whole different dimension to how you approach a game and the shape for a team and and how you can be a bit more expansive if needs be it doesn't mean you you can't crash it up either um so it might be an alternative option for for the style of play Munster want to use um yeah well i mean like rory scannell is along similar lines there in the channel and and you kind of have yeah granted like he's a left-footed player but i actually to do rory uh, uh I hope I didn't do him a disservice. I think he adds a huge amount of value because he has the left foot. Um, When when you've got the right foot, left foot combination, it's, it's a huge help for a 10 as well, you know.